Hi, I'm Amy Tridgell. I'm a location manager working in the UK film industry and I'm on lockdown, like everybody. I thought I'd use this time to call fellow location managers and supervising location managers to talk about their career and what they've learned to the, in the industry and see if there are any, is there any advice or tips they can share with junior crew members. I thought I'd call it Ask the Question. Today, I'm talking to Jane Soans. Jane started her career in theatre. She started working as a location manager in TV and in the 1990s working on um, a TV classic, Challenge Annika. Her career spans TV drama, British independent films, high-end television, being a film officer. Um, she has worked with directors like Mike Nichols, Catherine Bigelow, Madonna. After her time at Film Fixer, where she was a film officer, she um, found the lure of onset life just too great, and she's back. Location managing films like Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool, and most recently as part of the team for Brave New World for Sky. So here we go, let's ask the question. Okay, uh, hello Jane, thank you so much for our, answering our questions today. Hello Amy, it's lovely to see you. And so what's, the favorite, what's your favorite film that you've worked on? Well, there's so many. Um, but I think probably the most stimulating was Births, Marriages and Deaths, which was a four-part TV series directed by Adrian Shergold. I read the script and thought, oh God, it's three houses. And, you know, what, you know how complicated it is going into people's houses, changing everything and all of that kind of business. I thought, you know, this is going to be a ball ache. But then he said how he wanted to see two guys going along the outside corridor, outside a block of flats, get to the front door, stand either side of the front door. The wife comes out and answers the door. They take the third man and go down the, the corridors. The camera comes up over the block of flats where there is a, a, a roof garden with chickens and rabbits and goodness knows what. And then down over the shoulder of the wife on the other side when she comes out on the balcony and sees the guys going into a limousine parked on the road. And I thought, that's not going to be boring. <laughs> the guys had to run like hell to get <laughs> from the corridor, down the stairs, round the corner, <laughs> into the and stroll into the into the limousine it was it was a great shot and the whole thing was like that there was another occasion it's uh, a shot from the front of a rolls royce and you had ray winston driving the car so to begin with the camera is looking at his face and then comes round so that it's looking past his face he looks across and as he looks across you see a prostitute that he'd visited who then goes down on him so you see the head coming down into his lap and then it goes back round to the front of the car facing his face and he's sort of sitting back you know, enjoying himself thank you very much and when you come round to the side again Sitting in the seat was um, the guy, the, the woman that he, he'd managed to kill with her eyes dropping off and all sorts of things. And this was all in one shot moving along a dual carriageway um, near St Albans. And <laughs> it was extraordinary that the, the girl, the first girl, had to get out of the car and sort of um, lean has that they put some perspex along the side of the the, the rails that the car the, the the low loader was f you know full width so it was 11 foot six wide we had to have police escort and all that kind of stuff it took about four hours to set up meanwhile the police were twi you know twiddling their thumbs and saying what's going on and about half an hour to shoot but when the girl got out she had a bare bum and there was a guy walking his dog along the verge, <laughs> just absolutely freaked. Can you tell us about your best day on set? The second job I did as a location manager was Anna Lee, and the culmination of the episode was a scene with the couple on a, a cruise ship, a, a small, you know, Thames gin palace type boat. He proposed to her or something like that, and they wanted to clink champagne glasses as Tower Bridge opened up. I thought this was interesting. So I approached uh, the Port of London Authority and said, how do I do this? They put me in touch with Tower Bridge and they also put me in touch with Chris Livett, who is an amazing um, person who manages filming on huge jobs. He's a great mate and I adore him. The 
second AD and I sat on the steps of HMS Belfast, which is where Chris's office was at that time. And he had a little boat called Equity that he ferried people backwards and forwards on. And we set everything up and um, magically Tower Bridge opened as they went through the bridge clinking champagne glasses. And you just meet so many people who love working with the film industry because, but you know, you've got to keep health and safety as a priority. The, you know, the whole point about traffic on the Thames and all that sort of business. So, I mean, there was no need for the, for the bridge to open, but they did open it. And it meet, involves closing a road for five minutes at a time and then, you know, letting it go again. So it was an amazing opportunity and it shows what you can do if you have enough preparation time and all the rest of it. Um, what is your favourite part of our job? I think it's the kind of developing the relationships at the beginning. If you read the script, if you've got an imagination, I mean, when, when I read a script, I always kind of see the places in my head. And then talking to the designer and the director about what they're really looking for and maybe showing them some old photographs and what have you to get a feel of what they really want in order to tell the story. I think that's the really interesting part of the whole thing. It, it's creative and, and, you know, it stretches the imagination. It stretches. It, it's also really interesting going around the location that you have thought might work with them to see what they're going to have to dig up in order to film it or repaint or all the rest of it and this feasibility of, of all the things that they think they want to do. I think that is the most creative part of it and you meet some fantastic people. I mean we are so privileged to, to, to meet all these people that you wouldn't normally meet and get them to do something they didn't know they wanted to do and enjoy it with any luck. What do you look for when, you, when you're taking a job? I think it's the script. I like telling stories about the UK, London. I read the script and if the script turns me on, that, that's what will make me want to do a job. And also who the director, designer, producer, who they are, because it, it's important to be able to work with whoever it is that you're you know, going to be working with. Uh, so, do you have a um, heavy machinery qualification, like a ticket for a genie boom? And do you think that's an important thing to have for location work? I think it's something that is hugely desirable in a member of my team. It was fantastically uh, amazing when we were filming in a farm and the two Manitous had arrived too early and the guy had just unloaded them and dumped them. So they were right in the way of everything. And I arrived as Jodie Gregory was moving one, having moved the other so that it was out of the way. And to, to have somebody on the team who can do that is just fantastic. I, I didn't start being a location manager until I was in my early 40s. And struggling to get a job was, was one thing, to try and do a qualification on, on it. it. It didn't seem relevant. I, I've toyed with the idea of doing it. I think there's so much that one would have to learn about it. I would rather somebody else in the team got taken up with that sort of thing. I need to be on my feet and able to manage things. It's a great, great talent and I would look for it in a unit manager for, for certain. Uh, what is the, what's your favourite scene in a location that you found? There is a film called Shiner that I made with Michael Caine. And there's a scene on the roof of the Truman Brewery and they are face to face. So you've got these two heads face to face and in between the two heads is Christchurch uh, Spitalfields Tower and London. You know where you are. I think I'm not sure whether you could see St Paul's, but you could probably see Tower Bridge or something along those lines. So you knew you were in the middle of the city of London. So you didn't have to say where you were, you just were there in, in the film. And that's what I mean about finding locations that help to tell the story. Who's been your favourite designer to collaborate with? I did a film called Chromophobia, directed by Martha Fiennes. Tony Barrow was the designer and I really love working with him. He is a very gentle, very creative man. Um, I'd been told, I'd wanted to work with him for a long time. He designed Richard III when Ian McKellen played Richard III. 
when London felt like it had been invaded by the Nazis. So with very, very little in the way of dressing, but key, really important bits, you, he, you completely changed the atmosphere of somewhere. It was brilliant, really fantastic. Uh, do you have any tips for people progressing through their career? I think it's really important to try not to make enemies of anybody, to remain friends with people. You never know who is going to recommend you for the next job. My second job came from the second AD who was on both my first job and the second job because I'd managed to get a unit base, a tiny unit base, and get the facilities to park terribly close together in this tiny space. And he remembered that when they were looking for a, another location manager. And that's how I got the job. What advice would you give somebody uh, just starting out in the industry? To work on location is the best way of finding out how things work. To be a marshal, to go and, and mix with people who are doing that sort of thing. As you progress it to being a runner or a, a location assistant or something like that, the important thing is to make sure you understand what people are asking you to do and don't go and do something off your own bat without checking that it's the right thing to do because uh, assumptions are the mother of all fuck-ups if you'll excuse the expression the locations department are eyes and ears of everybody else who are, who's trying to get on set so it's important to do things as quickly as possible and understand what it is that you're doing and make sure that you only do what you've been asked to do. The other thing to do is to read everything. If you're asked to photocopy something, read it, because that's where you'll learn it. Don't tell everybody about it, read it, inwardly digest it and let it go. How do you persuade people to give you permission? What, how do you persuade people to do something they didn't know they wanted to do? <laughs> I think you have to be, you have to tell the truth. You have to say, we, we'd like to come and film in your church, we want to have a fight and end up with somebody strapped to a upside down across or something. You know, you have got to be honest. Some people will be up for it because they like the ethos of the film or the or the what have you. And people take on the kind of the enthusiasm that you you have for yourself. And if 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 you are impressed and like a location, the chances are that they love, love the location as well and like showing it off. We are like an invasion force when we arrive and it's really important that people understand what it's like and that you are there to protect things for them. Who have you been um, most starstruck by? Catherine Bigelow. I was um, very lucky to be asked to do um, location uh, managing for a scene in Zero Dark Thirty when they were shooting in the UK. I went down to the production office and I was wandering around this darkened area and I went into an empty room. Catherine Bigelow was just sitting there. I was, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, I didn't mean to disturb you. No, no, it's lovely to see you. How are you doing? And she was so generous. And when we were working on the set, she was very sensible and I had very little to do with her, but I did think she was stunning. And the other person I really enjoyed working with immensely was Steve Clark Hall. He is a very capable producer and um, witty and charming. Camera crews or Penelope crews? Camera crews have their goods and bads, but Penelope Cruz is an absolute star. I worked with her briefly on uh, chromophobia. She was an amazing person, just so competent, self-contained and professional and a delight. If not locations, what? I wouldn't want to work in any other department in, in the film industry, I don't think. Perhaps I should have become a line producer or a production manager or something, but actually locations has such a freedom. We can go off and have a coffee. We have very, very long hours, but we don't have to sit on set watching paint dry. What's your uh, worst story ending with a friendly farmer with a tractor? It was a film called Clockwork Mice and we were filming a lot around sort of Essex east of Hertfordshire. We were filming this scene towards the end of the day and the Gen Jenny driver drove straight on to a stubble field. I was worried about this, we didn't have trackway or anything like that. By the time we finished filming, it was dark and they started trying to go backwards and forwards and drive up and down. And somebody said, hey, Jane, the, the 
Jenny's stuck. So I went up to them and I said, please just keep still, leave it where it is. If you drive it any further, it'll be up to its axles, it'll be more difficult. The farmer came about 15 minutes later, over the hill, pitch dark, blazing headlights on the front of his tractor. Took five minutes to get the thing off the stubble field and onto the road and the sparks were fairly um, sorry for themselves. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Thank you so much. Enjoy your time in Heathfield and uh, Thank you very much. Uh, we'll speak again soon, no doubt.